Hey, this is the Varla Pegasus scooter. And as you can see, this thing really scoots. Let's talk about it. When it comes to the world of scooters, there are a lot of names out there, but only a handful of them are synonymous with being the top of the line. Varla is one of those scooters, and we're really, really happy that they sent us this and asked us to do a review. So today, I'm going to do a review as if will we be able to use it now over the last couple of years i've been dreaming about taking scooters with us in our van and our echo and i finally got to ride one last fall and i fell even more in love with it and several folks have sent us scooters for us to review so today let's see if this varla pegasus scooter will work for us in other words is it easy to ride is it fun to ride is it easy to pack and fold is it something that i think i can just take to a campsite and just go off and have a good time and also, is it something that will work for you, our viewers, who also love to travel and love a little bit of adventure in your life? So let's keep going. So there's one of the first things I wanted to test. How does this do on gravel roads? Because Lynn and I, we often like to go out on gravel roads and enjoy, well, dirt paths and out in the woods, kind of like where you'd ride a mountain bike a lot of times. And if she's gonna ride her bike, I need to be able to keep up. This has eight inch, no flat, no air tires, which is really, really great. So when we head out west, I won't get a flat tire but it is a little bit of a rough ride when you're on gravel and dirt roads. Let's get back on the pavement. Hey. Okay, here comes the first big test. I'm gonna climb this hill. Okay, <laughs> that was a little scary. This thing has flat bottom tires. So when you look at the tires, they're really flat on the bottom and then they kind of round up. So it's the first scooter I've ever ridden like this and it takes a little bit to get used to because what I'm used to is more like a motorcycle where turning is not really turning the wheel, it's, it's leaning and doing this. So what you end up with, with this one, It'll lean a little bit, but as you lean a little bit further, it wants to jerk you back up into the middle. That's something I've got to get used to. Now, the upside of that is because they won't go flat, it's really, really good for riding out west where there's goat heads and cactus needles and all kinds of things that can cut your tires. And as you can see, it climbed a really slippery and kind of steep hill. <coughs> can you see me? <laughs> Let's talk about why there's so much power with this Pegasus scooter. We expect the rear wheel to have a pretty good size motor, and there is. There's a 500 watt motor in the rear tire. But what makes this unique, there's also a 500 watt motor in the front tire. And that gives it more power than I've ever been able to experience riding a scooter. And I've got to get used to it. That's why I'm wearing gloves. That's why I'm wearing a helmet. Not that you shouldn't do that all the time, but my chances of going down on this scooter today are far greater because of these flatter wheels and because it's just got so much power. But power, <laughs> power, it's, that's awesome. It'll be really fast to take the trash out at a campground with this much power. I said having power on both wheels well it's like having all-wheel drive except they're both booking and I'm gonna to have to get used to that those flat tires I'm gonna to have to get used to that another thing I'm gonna to have to get used to it doesn't have as wide of a deck to put your feet on as I'm used to so I'm having to figure out where to put my feet it does have this little bump at the back that you can put your foot there and, and if I were more comfortable I could put my foot like that and and make that work so there's a lot you may want to know about the scooter just too much for me to tell you in a review like this. And it gets boring when I try to do that. So I'm gonna put a screenshot right 
here so that you can look at all the specs for the scooter and figure out if it's something that you want to buy. Now, is this the cheapest scooter you can buy on the market? It's not even close. Is it the most expensive? Not even close. It's in that middle tier of really nice features, really well made and made by a company that supports what they sell and has been around for a long time and is one of the top four or five companies that make scooters. So as my mama always said, sometimes you get what you pay for. And I think for this scooter for us, I think that's the case, but only you can decide if it's something that you may wanna buy yourself because you know, you never know. You have to save up for rainy days like this. You know your budget better than we do, so we can't tell you this is what you should buy. But all I can do is honestly tell you what I like and what I don't like. So far, there's a lot that I like about this scooter. Let me go a little bit further. I'll tell you a few things that I don't like, and then we'll wrap this up. I've got it on power assist one. I'm gonna put it on two. Now we'll pick up more speed. One of the things I really like about it, there's a lot of power. Between having a thousand watts between both tires, there's hardly a hill that you can go on that you can't climb with the scooter. So let's talk about a few things that are gonna either take a, a little bit of getting used to for me or things I'm gonna end up not liking. First thing I've already mentioned, that platform. It's not as wide as I'm accustomed to. Now they do have a scooter that has a much wider platform, but this one is made for being a commuter. By the way, I told you before, I'm reviewing this based upon a guy that's gonna travel in an RV. So I'm looking at things that make it perfect for being in an RV park or being in a campground somewhere or a state park or a national park or national forest or on some dirt road. That's how I'm looking at it. This scooter was really built to be a commuter's dream. So it's really great for getting it out of your apartment and riding it to work instead of taking a taxi or the subway or driving. But for me, I'm gonna be putting it in our RV. And so I'm gonna be wanting to know, does this thing work for a guy that's gonna be doing that? So this platform, it really works well if you're in town. But if I'm on a dirt road or a bumpy road, I think I want a little more room for my feet because there've already been a few times that I felt my foot wanting to come off. So that's the first thing. The second thing has to do if you've towed anything. People say all the time, I can tow this. My car or my truck can tow it. It's not whether you can tow it, it's whether you can stop it. Brakes. Brakes are really, really important. And I think you saw back there, whenever I first got on this, this thing will lock up the tires because there's so much power going to it and you can literally smell rubber burning. So for that reason, I'm having to retrain the way I try to stop. And there's the scooter emergency brake stance that you have to take. And this is the first scooter that I've ever ridden that you have to do that. You have to scoot down and drop down and put your weight to the back of the scooter because it's gonna to wanna to make you go forward. And so it's another thing to get used to. Is it something that keeps me from wanting to ride it? No, but it is something I'm gonna to have to learn to deal with. I booked back to the car. So this is gonna be a really short list of things we don't like. That's it. It is a fun, fun, fun scooter to ride. And you may be saying, why do you wanna ride a scooter in the first place? I think for me, one of the things about it is it's so quick to get on it and go do what you're doing and then come back. So like you're going to a farmer's market and you wanna go from one block to three blocks over, instead of having to get a bicycle out and crawl on and then find a place, hopping on this scooter is almost like stepping up on a step. And then once you do it, you press on the little throttle and off you go. Speaking of throttles, there's three different speed settings on this, one, two, and three. And, and there's zero, but I don't know why you'd want zero, <laughs> but one, two, and three. And as I was coming back here, I hit about 21 miles per hour on a flat road with a person that weighs 195 pounds. It is a little bit water resistant, but it is not waterproof. And I'll put the number for that up here so you can see that. I have learned from doing these scooters that very few of them are waterproof. So make sure if you're out and it starts raining and it's gonna be a downpour, make sure you get this thing covered up. At least that's my experience. So let's speak a little bit about my experience. 
this is my third scooter and I've had one that's pretty uh, strong and built for off-road, one that's a really small one that is a great light one that I took on my last trip, and then this one. And so I don't have a great deal of experience with these, but I'm thinking a lot of our viewers that watch this, you're not gonna have it either. And you're gonna be wondering, do I need to get one? Is it safe? Well, one way you can find out Go to some bigger city, and a lot of those cities have commuter scooters that are available for you to stick a credit card in or get an app and rent it for 30 minutes and ride it around for a few minutes and see if it's something you really like. If you can find a store that sells scooters, most of them will let you take it out and ride it around their parking lot, and they'll have demo models for you. Another thing you can do, guys that have scooters, tell you what, they like other people looking at their scooters. So if you see somebody in a campground that has one, chances are if you walk up to that person, they're gonna let you ride that scooter around. That's how I rode my very first one. So one of our neighbors what? here at the campground has a scooter and Owen's been wanting one for so long. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And it's how I was hooked in knowing eventually I'm gonna get a scooter, which I've done. Now. I'm not saying you should get one. You can see from doing this that this may not be as safe as riding a bicycle. These things will book and if you're flying down the road and you do something stupid, then you are probably gonna get hurt. So it's one of those things that you wanna wear a helmet. You might even wanna at first wear a full face helmet so that you know, mama likes looking at your face. Keep that thing protected. Wear gloves so if you go down on the gravel, you know, th that road rash is something that's gonna hurt you. So, you know, all I'm telling you is if you do decide to get one, be careful with it. This Varla Pegasus scooter, best one I've ridden so far, and I am hooked on this thing. I can't wait to tell you more. We're gonna put it back in the car because it's starting to rain and we'll head home and we'll talk a little bit more about it and wrap this up. So as I was saying, you need to be careful with these things, not only when you're out riding, but you know, if you're going to be at a campground or a campsite overnight, if you think it's going to rain, make sure you put it up or put it under some kind of cover because all of them are a little bit susceptible to getting moisture in them, unless it says they're completely waterproof. And I'll put the IPX rating for this one right here. So as I said, the list of things I don't like, well, I don't even know if I could even say I don't like them. All I can say is this, there's one more thing that I wish was a little different or it's gonna take me a while to get used to, that handlebar. Turning the handlebar and steering, this has the tightest steering that I've ever felt. So when you're wanting to roll it around when you're walking or just getting started, you have to turn the handlebar pretty hard to get it to turn. But then once you get up to 10 to 15 miles an hour, that stiff steering, well, it's your friend then because I felt like I had less wobble going back and forth. And I think that's because of two things. One, the steering is tighter and there's not as much wiggle in going back and forth. And two, those flatter tires just seem to stick to the road better. And so it provides that commuter balance that you'd want to have when you're going down the road and commuting on this. Another thing that I noticed when we were out there, off-road on gravel, the suspension is pretty good, but there's quite a bit of bouncing around and it is a much rougher ride than the few of the other scooters that I've ridden. So I wouldn't exactly say this is built for taking on dirt trails or other things. I'll probably do that every now and then, but this will mostly be a scooter that we ride around. Lynn says take the trash out. I'll go grab a bag of trash and go ride up and take the trash out and then disappear and ride around the park. Or we're going to go ride to town to eat and she'll ride her bike. I'll probably jump on the scooter. But if we go out on a dirt trail somewhere, I think probably that's the time to put this in the garage and to ride a real bike. But you know what? That's a real good thing about this is you have options. So there you have it, the Varla Pegasus scooter. Wow. I think after I ride this three or four or 500 more times, <laughs> all those things I don't like about it right now, I probably won't even remember what they were because as you ride these, you get more and more comfortable with the kind of personality that each one has. This one definitely has some personality. Now, I love it. That doesn't mean I'm telling you to go buy it. I would tell you to try it before you buy anything else in the thousand to two thousand dollar range because this thing is quite a scooter in that price range. But like I said, only you know your budget and what you've got coming up to spend money on and and what you can justify spending on toys because this is, for me at least, a toy. 
something I can have fun doing things that I normally do on a bike. I can do on a scooter. And that's really a cool thing for me. And at my age, I like finding things that are fun to do that add a little bit of enjoyment when I go do something mundane like taking the trash out or going to renew for another two or three days at a state park and putting your money in the slot. Stupid little things like that. Something like this makes even those mundane things for me a little more fun. My name is Owen and this is Van Trekking Lifestyle and thank you so much for watching the review. I hope in some small way it was helpful. And if you get one, I hope I see you out there on the road somewhere. Trek on trekkers. Oh yeah, before I say bye for good, I want to tell you the word scooter means a lot to me. My grandfather called me scooter until I was probably 13 years old. I never really knew why until I finally asked him and he said I was an idiot. I couldn't crawl. All I did was sit down on my diaper and scoot around until I was like I was like two years old. And so he named me Scooter and that's what he called me. All my cousins and all my family called me Scooter until I was older. And now, hey, Scooter, it means something to me too. Get on a scooter and scoot on down the road. Scoot on, trekkers.